r slash ask reddit serious historians marine biologists biologists and cryptozoologists of reddit as far as legends and history go what legendary creature do you believe may have been real and probably existed in some way or what supposedly legendary person in history was more than likely real there are many diseases that the origin of the vampire vampire myth can be traced back to however I think rabies fits it the most. In the olden days, people would tie those suspected of it to trees. In about 3 days time the disease would drastically change them. Extreme light sensitivity, paleness, aggression, excessive drooling. They could would try to attack you and have bouts of either extreme slow fatigue or even adrenaline. Also, rabies can be passed from person to person through a bite not just an infected animal. Rabies honesty sounds like how a modern zombie virus would work, but unlike science fiction, rabies is real and terrifying. The Wendigo probably existed, just not as a creature. People in the far north who survived a brutal winter by eating a family member had a psychological escape hatch for the guilt and horror by convincing themselves they were transforming into a ravenous, murderous beast. They'd continue killing and eating in a hysteric delusion that they had no control over it. Wendigo hunters would then have to come and kill them and perform a shamanic ritual to assure the rest of the tribe that the taint wouldn't spread. It's actually an incredibly fascinating study into culturally specific mental illness. The lengths the mind will go to in order to avoid dealing with a traumatic event are so extraordinary that in that culture they would actually continue to murder and cannibalize fellow tribe members under the delusion they had transformed into a monster. The Maori people of New Zealand have long told stories of the power gay, a monstrous bird that was big enough to hunt and eat humans. Many believe that these stories are referring to the Haast seagull. It was the largest species of eagle ever to have lived on earth. With weights of around 30 pounds and wingspans almost reaching 10 feet, it lived on New Zealand's South Island and primarily hunted the flightless moa bird, which weighed around 500 pounds. Given the large size of its main prey, it's likely that the eagle may have also targeted lone humans as well. Interestingly enough, the Haast seagull went extinct around the year 1400, not long after the Maori arrived in New Zealand. It's thought that its extinction can be attributed to habitat destruction combined with the extinction of the moa due to hunting by the Maori. There is a child's skull in a museum somewhere with markings on the back and front near the eye sockets. Originally archaeologists believed it to be linked to violence or sacrifice, until they discovered it matched the talons of the Haast seagull exactly, and that it had been discovered in a pile of bones similar to the piles left by modern birds of prey. Kid was about 6 and got bird snagged. The Lusker, giant octopus. It supposedly lives in the blue holes of the coast of Florida and the amount of food and temperature of water both support the theory of an octopus living long enough to grow way larger than we expect based on our current records. The Cyclopes of Greek mythology. Go google up an elephant skull. There's this huge hole right in the middle of it looking to all the world like a single eye. Now add this to the knowledge that the Cretan dwarf mammoth left sub-fossil bones on Crete easily discoverable, was 1 meter at the shoulder, and could be more or less assembled into a giant humanoid. You don't even need to rear and the bones just make the skeleton stand on its hind legs. Remove the tusks and boom. A cyclops skeleton. Chupacabra. It has to be some poor sick animal with mange. Mange is highly contagious so if a pack of coyotes or wild dogs got it they would all have a weird ass appearance and attack other animals out of hunger. It's similar with jackalopes and wappeltingers. There's actually a cancer that causes rabbits to have large horn like protrusions from its head. Edit. Sorry it was wallpetinger. I had spelt it wrong. Thanks for pointing that out everyone. Edit 2. Wow didn't expect to get almost 2k up votes. Thanks everyone. There's a small population of albino deer in my area and they are beautiful. Definitely ethereal looking and totally match the European description of a unicorn. The mythical unicorn likely derives from travelers from Africa or Asia to Europe trying to describe a rhinoceros. There are Asian rhinos in India, Nepal, and Indonesia. When you consider that ancient Greek depictions of lions sometimes look more like dogs and that the word hippopotamus comes from Greek words meaning river horse it's easy to see how a Greek traveler would describe a rhino as a one-horned horse. There's linguistic evidence for this idea. 400 years ago it was believed that there were two types of rhinos. 
Ones with two horns were called rhinoceros and ones with a single horn were called unicorn. So the word unicorn was used to describe both real rhinos and the mythical one-horned horse. It wasn't until zoology advanced as a science that unicorn came to refer purely to the mythical creature. There are still remnants of the original usage though. The genus of the scientific names for Asian rhinos, which have one horn, is unicornus. The kraken probably existed. It could just be a colossal squid. But those sailors had to have seen something. With colossal squids existing today, and the fact that animals were larger a long time ago, things like the megalodon, a kraken sized squid is certainly possible. Yet given the existence of colossal squid the kraken is the most believable myth to me. Early sailors thought manatees were fish girls. They probably saw some kind of colossal squid and the legend was born. Archaeologist here, there's a really interesting ancient Egyptian story called the shipwrecked sailor in which a man is washed ashore a beautiful island and is apprehended briefly by an enormous serpent. In the story, the serpent tells him that there used to be hundreds of others like him but a falling star wiped them all out. I think it's unlikely that the Egyptians had knowledge of dinosaurs. But there's a site called Wadi Hitton that has thousands of ancient whale skeletons from the Eocene. I think it's possible they could have seen these skeletons and mistaken them for giant snakes. Herodotus actually tells similar tales of giant flying snakes in Egypt and I suppose if you saw these skeletons but no trails you might think they were capable of flight. Oh man. You want the real gold standard shit on this. You want aboriginal tales from Dreamtime which in many cases have been proven to be validated records predating the end of the last ice age. They coexisted with megafauna in Australia, and their crypto creatures have literally been linked back to now extinct fauna. The oral tradition of Australia is so incredible to me. Just the idea that history could be passed down so accurately for so long is just ducking amazing. It really is. I mean. You think about the Rosetta Stone and how that was a holy shit moment because it unlocked the Egyptian language and pushed back our knowledge about 5000 years. Aboriginal myths and legends go back 20,000 years plus. Based on multiple descriptions of the Australian cryptid, the Bunaib, I firmly believe them to be seals who swam inland. The Kraken were likely colossal squid which swam up to the surface. The Black Demon Shark of Mexico is just a large great white with pigment issues. I regularly get to see pods of humpback whales at the beach where I surf. Most of the time, all you see is their backs as they partially surface from the water. Occasionally, one of them breaches mouth first, so you see a giant mouth emerge from the water. Other times, you see a giant tail emerge. If you were watching them and had no idea what a whale was, or that you were looking at multiple of them, I could easily imagine mistaking multiple whale backs as the coils of a colossal snake. I strongly suspect that this is the origin of legends of sea serpents. Changlings, babies switched out by fairies, were probably an early explanation for birth defects. More likely autism. Children with autism seem to develop normally for 12 to 18 months, then suddenly change and become much more withdrawn and uncommunicative. You could easily believe that your kid had been stolen by the fairies and an imposter left in their place. Note that 12 to 18 months is also when kids get their immunizations. Hence the vaccines made my kid autistic bullshit. Edit. It has been pointed out to me that kids get all kinds of immunizations from birth onwards. They usually get the MMR vaccine around the time that autistic symptoms first manifest. Hence the correlation that Andrew Wakefield leapt on in his now discredited paper. I believe that Bigfoot probably does exist, or at least did until very recently. But, I doubt that it was a unique species. My theory is that what people see is a mundane animal, probably a large brown bear, with serious genetic deformities, encountering a 7 foot bear with mange. Maybe a deformed cranium, possible scars from fights with other bears, and other such traits would certainly trigger a fight or flight response. You see something like that you haul ass in the other direction. When you stop you're not 100% certain of what you saw so your brain fills in the details. So you take a deformed animal and mix it with an imaginative mind that knows what the popular version of Bigfoot looks like and you get a bonafide Bigfoot sighting. Edit you slash nixie 9 link this video in a reply which perfectly illustrates what I'm referring to. If you see a bear like that in the video and that bear is suffering from one or more maladies that make it look different than a normal bear, patches of hair missing, 
malformed head or limbs, etc. A person's brain might jump to the conclusion that what that person saw was Bigfoot, and since most, if not all, Americans know what Bigfoot looks like this would probably be a normal conclusion to jump to and in no way indicate that the person is wrong, lying or otherwise purposely misleading. And I didn't mention it before but I'm pretty sure that the entire concept of Bigfoot can trace its origins directly to Yagantopithecus. Without Yagantopithecus there probably wouldn't be Bigfoot. But on the other hand who can say that the story didn't come from some other source? Perhaps ancient peoples saw a bear like I described and embellished the tale. Either way I'm convinced that most, if not all, Bigfoot sightings that aren't outright hoaxes are just people seeing a mundane animal and their brain interprets it as something else. Happens all the time with things that aren't mysterious cryptids. You know, when a bear has been shot and skinned, it looks disturbingly humanoid. I won't say that you just debunked Bigfoot, but I sure would bet that someone, somewhere has seen a particularly pitiful bear and thought it was an ape sort of thing. After all, an animal with no hair looks a lot like an animal with no skin. You know I've said this for years that bears just look like people in bear costumes. That's a very unnerving thing to read late at night. One I believe that stories of wild men, giants, wary bipeds et al are rooted in hunter-gather cultures which existed on the periphery of civilization as defined by early subsistence farmers. Two King Arthur existed as at least one post-Roman warlord. Very simple mythological creatures like black dogs were probably exaggerated stories of encountering wild dogs in the dead of night. They're often described as having glowing eyes which isn't an unusual effect when torchlight is reflected in dogs or cats eyes. The black dog spirit smiths of the British Isles are also likely the grim professor Trelawney was talking about in the prisoner of Azkaban. I live in Suffolk, England, where the most high profile cases of the black dog, or black shuck have happened. I was over at a friend's house, who lived a village over from me, her dad took me home, and my friend came along for the ride, part way home, middle of nowhere, late in the evening, her dad almost swerved to miss something, we carried on, but he was visibly shaken, my friend also reacted to seeing something, and they both described the exact same thing, a big, black, shaggy dog in the middle of the road, staring at them, it was the size of a large wolf but looked skinnier and its fur was far more coarse and matted. I was looking through the windscreen at the same time as this all happened, and I saw nothing. The black dog is supposed to give forewinning of a death in the family. I can't remember if that happened, but I do recall my friend losing her grandmother and uncle at around the same time in our lives. I wish I could recall if it was after seeing the dog, but either way, it's a spooky tale. A rock could have been real. It was most likely inspired by the elephant bird of Madagascar. An elephant bird was like a big ass ostrich about 9 feet high. They didn't go extinct until the 16th or 17th century. The banshee was never real, but lots of Irish parents came up with a story about a screaming woman that kept their kids terrified and in their beds. The banshee's woeful wail meant kids had to stay in bed or get stolen away. This story was told so that the parents in question could have sex, loud sex, because the kids would have heard their mom's amorous moans and interpreted them as a ghostly call from beyond the grave, aka your edit. It appears that the relative who told me her banshee story growing up in the midwest, she was of Irish extraction, did not tell me the story as it was told to every other Irish person, ever. So, sorry for the confusion. But I still think a wailing woman could have been a decent carnal cover story. P.S. If married couples never had sex in a one room house when there were kids asleep in the same room, where did the other kids come from? Well I suppose existed is being stretched here, but many people until fairly recently were adamant that cyclopes exist existed. The evidence they used turned out to be the skulls bones of dinosaurs or elephants. There's also evidence for King Arthur existing. But similarly to Moses, it seems to have been a dude that did some stuff but later other big fish stories got attributed to him, and it just grew over time. Back then it was common to change the names of the folk hero so that the story itself would be remembered. Also dragons. Nearly every culture has a mythological giant lizard. In a way they're correct. Almost all of the evidence they gave turned out to be dinosaur bones fossils. Edit. 
Thank you for the silver kind redditor. Edit 2. I should have mentioned when I first wrote. Getting my masters in ancient and medieval history. Edit 3. Oh my goodness I didn't notice 2.5k upvotes. Thanks all. Fun fact. Trisomy 13 can cause babies to look like cyclops. The Trisomy 13 rarely ever make it to birth. But I could see how people believed in cyclops. There's a good chance something like the Loch Ness Monster existed at some point in time. I'm a sort of an old fan of cryptozoology myself. And I've got the theory about Nessie that would also explain probably half of all of the most famous lake monsters across the world. There's a possibility that these creatures are rogue giant eels. That are either known species of eels that have grown to large proportions as anomalies. Or simply undiscovered larger species of eels. I've seen video footage of eels that seem to be somewhere between 9 to 12 feet long in South America. And if one isn't ready or familiar with a creature like that and it appears, it is known that people People can even be stunned into thinking that the creature is even bigger than it is. Also, the eel theory would explain why the sightings are so rare, because it would be a more unusual situation for an eel to surface for a while, but it happens. I've heard of a hypothesis that states the Ragnarok myth actually describes an impact event. The Midgard snake could be an object entering the atmosphere. There was a Bronze Age meteorite impact in Estonia that became a key element of Finnish mythology. Perhaps the myth percolated over to the Nordics. Alright as a historian. Giants. They exist in some form over many cultures and history. My favorite story is about a Native American tribe that told the story of the giants that killed them to near extinction generations upon generations ago and how they were a horrible beast and quite large all the characteristics of giant. Truth be told, and this is probably true of most legends accounts of giants that it's just a height relative thing. A majority of the population was quite small back in the day besides being easier to hide and run. Less body mass meant less food needed and more chances of survival. But I digress. People were quite small like average 5 footers and less. Anyone who was taller was probably a considered a giant. And all whole tribe of giant people 5 feet 10 and above must have been especially terrifying when they were a warring tribe or just in conflict with you. But so the generational story was just about a smaller height wise tribe that encountered a taller height wise tribe and they fought. The story of the giants. The natives have a lot of stories of supernatural creatures that were just odd to them humans. The pale face beasts were probably vikings. Vikings caused a whole migration of a tribe as well. It's really interesting in my field of work to just put things in perspective. You gain so much. Edit. Some grammar. But a lot of you seem to lump the idea that all giants were baby elephant skulls. No. This story I referenced actually had archaeological evidence that one tribe versus another in a small area existed with a disproportionate height difference. I am still looking for the story I am referencing. Also. The Vikings were a different story. When the Vikings settled in Newfoundland for that short time span, they encountered a hostile native tribe. Some diseases were spread. Some fighting happened the usual. And this native tribe warned their daughter tribe of the white pale beasts, not verbatim, were coming and they needed to leave the area. This begins the migration of the Anishinaab, that traveled the St. Lawrence River to the Great Lakes and settled as the Ojibwa, the Potawatomi, and the Ottawa tribes. This is a condensed bastardized version of the whole story please keep in mind and tribe names might be wrong. Western concepts of sea monsters highly resemble plesiosaurs and similar extinct animals. Myths could have been created after those fossils were discovered. Or, hear me out, them shit's descendants are still swimming around. Edit. Descendants. Not ancestors. The Norwegians invented high carbon steel when they were making swords they would out the bones of predators into the molten metal which added carbon. The fact that they didn't grasp the scientific concept made it even more metal. The interesting part is that they believed that adding the bones to their weapons would imbue them with a kind of magic power, making the weapon stronger. I think unfortunate people in the past with hair disorders where hair covers their body are the root cause of people thinking up the idea of werewolves. This, mixed with the likely solitary lifestyle they had because people found them scary, led to people thinking that they were less than human and it wasn't long before someone said they were an animal, or at least half animal. TBH having seen my Italian grandfather shirtless, I understand where they're coming from. The Yeti. Recently they sequenced some DNA from so-called Yeti evidence. 
they pretty much all turned out to be bears. Some extinct. Some still around. To me the most interesting one was the crossbreed of the black bear and the polar bear. ScienceMag.org link. The mythical kingdom of Prestigeon probably did exist. It's likely Ethiopia. But since information was passed slowly and through hundreds of retellings back in the 14th to 17th centuries, it's likely the story of Ethiopia was mistold after some period of time and respun into the story of the kingdom of Prestigeon. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.